Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And for those of you who are not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And if you find the information that I provide beneficial, you know, please hit that like button as well. Now, before we jump into our topic today, a quick reminder, you know, to learn more about my company, you know, be sure to check out the links below. Uh, a couple new things for you to take a look at. You know, if you're brand new to the industry or you're thinking about getting into the industry or if you're, you know, you're struggling a little bit um, or you're, you're inexperienced at your, your current level of employment, you know, check out our all new gym management playbook. Uh, this was designed and set up to help you shorten the learning curve and help you maximize, you know, bottom line profitability. So just, you know, click the link below to learn more about the gym management playbook. And in addition to that, you know, check out the funding link. If you're brand new, you're looking to open gyms. I know a lot of folks are doing that right now. We're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of interest, a lot of inquiries and folks want to open up new facilities, you know, check out that funding link. Or if you have an existing operation, you need additional funds for marketing to add staff, to get staff trained, to add equipment, you know, check out that funding link as well. And you could potentially qualify for up to $250,000 in funding, you know, with no collateral. So with that said, you know, let's get into our topic today. It's nine secrets to record breaking sales. Okay. That's what we want, right? You know, we want a, a robust, uh, profitable business and, you know, record breaking sales is going to be the way to do that. So let's go through nine secrets to record breaking sales. Number one, maintain a positive attitude. You know, you're going to breathe life into this one way or the other. Okay. You know, if we get in the habit of treating everybody like a buyer, and we have that positive attitude toward that, you're going to find sales will improve immediately. And you know, a lot of folks, they think they do this, okay, but they don't always. So really take a good hard look. Are we really totally positive? You know, are we treating everybody like a buyer? Are we prejudging? I mean, these are some things that happen. So, you know, number one is a big one. Okay. Treat everybody like a buyer, have that positive attitude, hold yourself to a pretty high standard on this because it's not quite as easy as it might sound. Uh, number two, you know, be more creative. Okay. Be more creative. And one of the things that I would say on this, okay, is if someone says, Hey, what kind of business are you in? Well, I'm in the solutions business. Hopefully we're all in the solutions business. You know, we get solutions for people. Okay. We find ways to get things done. And so be creative, you know, whether it be creative in your sales, creative in your marketing, creative in your follow-up, but be creative. And again, what I mean by that is start thinking about yourself that you are in the solutions business. There's no obstacle too big. There's no impossible. We are in the solutions business. Let's get creative. So it's number two, number three, prepare with care. Okay. And really what I'm talking about here is make sure you're writing a plan of action every single month, a new, fresh, crisp plan of action every single month that, you know, talks about goals, tangible and intangible goals, you know, the plan for tangible and intangible, you know, the, uh, you know, plan B, you know, roadblocks and setbacks. If it doesn't go quite right, you know, what's the plan for that? How are we going to do this? Have a plan. Don't just find yourself waiting for it to happen and you're handling, you know, what's coming your way. So, you know, prepare with care, write a plan of action every single month. Okay. You're in the solutions business, right? Um, number four, find the customer's problem. Okay. This is the thing in your marketing, you know, we want to find the customer's problem in sales, find the customer's problem in getting referrals, find the customer's problem. Okay. Find their problem. Okay. You know, find out their goals and then why are those goals important to them? How's it going to change their life if they accomplish those goals? Find out what problem they want solved. Because ultimately, this really is what selling is. Too many people, you know, we get so, so focused on our own agenda. I need so many sales. I need so many referrals. I need this. I need that. You know, our own agenda. That's really not what it is. What selling is, 
is solving problems for folks. And by virtue of solving problems, we're going to accomplish these other things. So find your customer's problem. Make sure we know what it is. Okay. Now, number five, now we want to find the right solution to that problem. We want to find the right solution to that problem. And so if it's in a selling capacity, you know, we identify the problem. Now, what is the solution? Because at the end of the day, you know, when value exceeds price, value, the solution to that problem, when it exceeds price, your customer is going to buy. If it comes down to simply showing a, a nice big fancy exercise floor and showing a price, that's not a solution. That's just adding an extra monthly payment, you know, to their monthly bills. Okay, it's leasing them space. So find the right solution to that problem. Now, number six is part of our nine secrets here. Keep that solution simple. Keep the solution simple. So when you're finding solutions for your customers at whatever level that is, always keep it simple. Don't, don't, don't create so many steps. I'll give you an example. It's kind of like in marketing. Okay. You know, we want to keep marketing as simple as possible, right? Because even just having one extra click that a customer has to make before they buy something or respond to something can cause them to X out and move on to something else. Okay. You want as few steps as possible. You want it as simple as possible. Okay. So keep the solutions simple. Number seven, be ethical and honest. You know, no little white lies, no leaving out crucial information, you know, be ethical and honest. You know, I remember when I first became a manager and when I first came up, the club that I was at, you know, did not have the best reputation and uh, they'd made some mistakes across the board and they got their hands slapped for a lot of it. And then I'd had success at sales partially because of that, because I was ethical and honest and boy, referrals just kind of flowed to me in part because of that. But I remember when I first became manager and I thought, okay, well, what are my goals here? How do I want to want this to look. And I remember sitting down and writing out my goals. My number one goal was if I ever met a customer in the grocery store, if they joined or didn't join, I wanted them to be willing to walk up and shake my hand. Okay. That was my goal. And it kind of comes back to that, you know, let's be ethical and honest. Let's do it at all times. Okay. Uh, number eight. Okay. You know, you want to cultivate your brand you know, promote your brand. You know, what is your brand? You know, what is your mission statement? What is it you're trying to do? Okay. You know, for your customers in your marketplace, and you want to promote this and promote this and promote this because ultimately, you know, what your brand is, it's really what people say, and what they think about you when they hear your name. Okay. Let's promote it. Let's make sure people know what we're there for and what we're trying to accomplish. And then number nine, sell softly, sell softly. Okay. You know, one of the reasons a lot of folks, um, don't come to gyms, don't want to check them out is they're kind of afraid of the hard sell. And let me tell you how I define that. Okay. The hard sell is when we sell for our, our agenda. My agenda is I want sales and I'm going to show you features and I'm going to show you price for the most part, that's going to be equated to the hard sell. Okay. But however, if we're focused with the customer on solving problems, on providing solutions, okay, on building value, different story all of a sudden, okay? So, you know, sell softly because you sell too hard. This is one of the reasons people don't come back and that becomes your brand, right? If you're not careful, okay? Doesn't mean you don't sell. I mean, doesn't mean, I mean, we've all had coaches, right? Coaches have pushed us to help us get results. That's part of it, okay? As long as it's done with the idea of truly helping someone solve problems uh, and get the solutions, you know, to those problems. So folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Hope you found this information beneficial today. If you have, please hit that like button. I appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you all in that next video.